So there's a ton of moving pieces when it comes to the litigation against the state's gun ban. We've already talked this morning about how Illinois State Police are enforcing the gun ban with at least one report they confirm with not very many details at this point, working to get more details about state police enforcing the state's gun ban. But while that's going on, you've got sheriffs across the state that say they won't enforce it. Uh, a dust up in DuPage County, the, the state's second largest county with the sheriff there uh, being asked to post a statement essentially saying that he's going to enforce the gun ban we'll see what happens there but uh, while all that's in the background you've got these lawsuits in federal courts that are filed and being consolidated uh, with a trump appointed judge looking at the uh, what could be four different federal cases lumped into one that would be the crawford county case that was transferred from state level court to federal court being lumped in with the isra's case with the federal firearms licensees of illinois case with the uh, national shooting sports foundation case uh, but you've also got the Naperville case out there, right? That's still uh, in federal courts and a temporary restraining order ruling could come out in the days ahead, if not possibly today. But in the state level cases, you've got the Effingham County case where uh, there was a temporary restraining order issued and the fifth appellate circuit court is looking at an appeal from the state with a reply filed by attorney Thomas DeVore in that case. So we could have a ruling on whether or not a temporary restraining order there is reversed or not. Uh, so we'll watch that closely. But we're also waiting on a temporary restraining order ruling out of White County. And it's possible the judge in White County could actually be waiting for what the 5th Appellate Court District does in the state challenge. Uh, and that could possibly instruct future challenges as well in state courts, let alone what the trajectory might be in the federal cases, especially with an outside of Illinois federal case against Maryland's gun ban challenge, uh, much further on and along in this process. Uh, so there could be a, a ruling in that case that determines what happens with federal cases. So there's a lot of there's a lot of back and forth. And listen, I'm not an attorney uh, and, and tracking all of this, it, it can get convoluted real quick. So hopefully I'm able to distill this down for you into to a very easy to understand uh, trajectory of everything that's going on here with these federal cases against Illinois' gun ban that was implemented January 10th, and here we are, January 31st. But one thing that is happening is some back and forth in state courts, where yesterday we talked with uh, Dan Calkins uh, about a uh, separate case that he filed in Macon County, and uh, Representative Calkins, he uh, laid out yesterday when we talked with him uh, what exactly he's looking for when it comes to this particular challenge in Well, Macon we're County. looking to uh, get this law declared unconstitutional. Um, lots of other lawsuits out there. Uh, we uh, uh, kind of got a different approach, but uh, the same track. Uh, our attorney, uh, Jerry Stocks, here has uh, drawn up, a, a, I think, a, a, a rather We'll be in court uh, with Judge uh, Forbes, I believe, 1.30 uh, Friday afternoon. So we'll do what we can to get to that hearing Friday and bring you the latest, of course, of all of the developments even into Monday. Uh, but with this case out of Macon County, another state-level case, a separate attorney, Tom DeVore, who has the Effingham County case and the White County case, he filed to intervene in Calkins's case, which Calkins's case is, of course, Calkins as a lead plaintiff with uh, what is also a group called the uh, Law Abiding Gun Owners of Macon County. Now, I talked with uh, attorney Thomas DeVore yesterday and uh, got his take of what exactly is going on with this challenge he's brought to intervene in the Calkins case. Uh, here is, uh, I guess, an overview of what uh, DeVore says is the uh, uh, the rationale behind his case uh, to intervene in Calkins's case. We uh, so today I was I was hired by uh, half a dozen people to file a request to intervene in the case in Macon County that was brought by State Representative Dan Calkins. These individuals were solicited by Dan to join his lawsuit that he was filing in Macon County. And all they had to do was send in their name, address, and email uh, and let him know they wanted to join the lawsuit. They all did that. And then each of them, in response, in some fashion, got an email back from Dan that they were in. And if they would like to donate money, they can donate money to his legal defense fund. Uh, the legal defense fund that they received was, in fact, nothing more than Dan Calkins' political campaign account. Uh, one of my clients did, in fact, 
submit a fifty dollar uh, donation. The others did not because they were concerned about the it being a campaign account. They thought they were going to be sending money to a lawyer. Uh, after they had submitted their information, and then this lawsuit actually got filed, they realized that none of them are in fact uh, named plaintiffs in this case. There was some kind of association created that nobody knew anything about. And, and, and again, my opinion is there is no association uh, as a type of entity. And I think that ultimately that whole thing's going to be thrown out by the, the court when the attorney general takes issue with that. So, but as far as my so again, uh, Tom DeVore, uh, some of the conversation I had with him, and he uh, goes on to discuss more about uh, whether this case that he's he's filed uh, to intervene in uh, Calkins's case, is he alleging that Calkins's case is going to be detrimental to other cases that are challenging the state's gun ban? It doesn't have any detriment on any other cases. I mean, it actually gives a little, you know, the good faith efforts that people are making across the state to try to stand up for themselves where you have a politician uh, overlapping his political uh, agenda with this legal agenda here. So, but beyond that, it doesn't do anything to that. But what it is going to do, Greg, is, is there is almost a, for, it's almost a foregone conclusion that this law-abiding gun owners of Macon County, which does not exist, that fiction, is going to get tossed out of this case. And then, you know, the initial list that was attached, I mean, associations never attach a list of their members to a pleading, but they did in this case. There's 600 plus people on that list. Uh, they're not going to be represented in any fashion in this matter, unfortunately. And a bunch of them put a bunch, you know, I don't know how much money Dan Calkins collected in his pan- campaign account, but whatever amount of money that was, uh, which hopefully gets returned. But if it doesn't, the only person left on that lawsuit is going to be Dan Calkins and one other man uh, in his business there in Macon County. So again, uh, Tom DeVore in a conversation I had with him yesterday about him intervening in the case that Dan Calkins brought in Macon County. Uh, I asked exactly what exactly is this case doing? What is this intervention doing uh, for these clients? And uh, does that mean he's going to be representing these clients in a challenge against the state's gun ban? Here's uh, uh, Tom DeVore. I'm intervening on the, I'm intervening on behalf of these six persons because these six persons are what's called putative members. You know, there's Dan is trying to take the the position that my clients are members of an association that they've never heard of and they never agreed to join and that could that could place some risk on them of being a member of an association. The attorney general might want to start deposing them and asking them are you a member of this association? Are you? Did you pay dues, uh, et cetera, et cetera? And, and they're left out. I'm tired of. Uh, uh, listen, as a reporter, I talked to uh, one side. I got it the other side. So I did reach out to uh, Calkins' attorney, Jerry Stock, and uh, talked with him briefly about uh, you know getting response to DeVore. Uh, so we'll share that with you next here on WMAY. It is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News and Talk, where you can connect with me each and every weekday morning here on YouTube, 6 to 9 live. You can also check out clips of the show at my YouTube channel, Bishop on Air. Uh, Also follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Just search out Bishop on Air and we can connect. Getting that back and forth over the Macon County case with attorney Thomas DeVore filing to intervene in Dan Calkins' case, challenging the state's gun ban. We heard or talked with him yesterday uh, about his concerns. He says he has clients that uh, didn't think they were going to be lumped into an association, uh, but uh, want to make sure that they're not lumped into an association in uh, the Macon County case that Dan Calkins brought, uh, even raising some questions about whether uh, this association is bona fide and could they possibly be picked apart by the attorney general? Could it muck up the case and so on? Uh, so we heard from DeVore. What about? from uh, Calkins' attorney in this case in Macon County, Jerry Stock, reached out to him, chatted, and got his reaction. And he said, essentially, uh, listen, he he supports DeVore's work in other counties, and they've used a lot of what DeVore has challenged in their Macon County case to challenge the state's gun law. Uh, but uh, he sees a fundamental difference between the approach of, uh, you know, filing a lawsuit with hundreds and hundreds of names on it, as DeVore has done in Effingham County, 866 names, charging two 
dollars a piece, plus uh, having the uh, Effingham County case, uh, a separate case, a White County case with seventeen hundred individuals, all of which again two hundred dollar uh, uh, fee for attorneys uh, to to handle that case that Devore brought in White County. Uh, so the 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 Macon County case, Calkins's attorney uh, said he didn't want to take that approach. He saw it as untenable. Uh, and I talked with uh, Jerry Stock yesterday. Here's some of what he had to say uh, in response to what uh, Devore is claiming uh, is a loose association that won't stand legal muster. Yeah, what you have here is there is, um, uh, I'm responding to a false debate. It's sort of a straw man discussion because it's really not germane to what's taking place here. If uh, the objective of the litigation is a judgment to adjudicate the statute unconstitutional, uh, the judgment, once it is against these defendants, they could never enforce because the judgment would bar them from doing so. A temporary restraining order is a brief timeout. It is not a judgment on the merits. Now, the fifth district, as the matter is pending before them, could. Uh, They have a lot of discretion. They conclude that uh, it's the equivalent of uh, that facially the statute's unconstitutional. I would read the Effingham County Court order as saying that, but uh, the the junction. I'm going to ask at the earliest possible opportunity, and uh, if I secure that, a judgment can be based on that. And that that is yours. Uh, it moves the defense until it's uh, uh, reversed by a higher court. Um, so, um, uh, so, so I don't. Uh, I am concerned, and, and there was no way that I was going to attempt to represent hundred clients when the remedy sought is a judgment not the temporary time out. While we will seek it on that path, the real issue, the ultimate goal, not legislation out. And I thought that uh, taking a fee, my firm taking a fee based on the volume of clients was not something with which I could be coy. Uh, Others can. I'm not saying there's anything uh, unethical about it. If it's disclosed and everyone knows what they're doing, that is, um, that's fine. So I'm, I'm not uh, casting any aspersions. It's just for uh, my view of the world. It's not something I wanted to do. Uh, so I do not view it as necessary legally because the law well is established that uh associations, and even uh, commercial um, uh, um, plaintiffs, which we have in our case, uh, FFLs, uh, they can even seek to uh, vindicate the constitutional rights of their customers. An association here, an unincorporated voluntary uh, group uh, forming for a common purpose, it's a very, very low hurdle. It only takes two people. And uh, in the group can seek to vindicate their rights because the individuals are not necessary to secure the adjudication, to show uh, a case in controversy and adjudicate the issue. So uh, I saw uh, a host and abundance of litigation hurdles and burdens the issue where they won't be involved and contribute to the cause may do so. And here, especially in the way Mr. Calkins, um made his inquiry, i.e. contribute to a defense fund um, and voluntarily, uh, that that was uh, a better way to litigate the issue. So 
that's what we've done. And it's in that respect that I uh, you know, very strongly disagree with uh, Mr. DeVore. Uh, and I, I think that his um, application of uh, some legal principles is a bit too strict uh, in that respect. And I just think it's a far more um, uh, liberal way of pursuing the claims uh, and not having to implicate every individual gun owner uh, or to charge every individual gun owner a fee. Uh, it just was not necessary. So again, that was uh, Jerry Stock, the attorney representing uh, Dan Calkins in the case in Macon County, challenging Illinois' gun ban, uh, saying that he just doesn't agree with the approach that Thomas DeVore is taking of charging individuals, hundreds of them at a time, to file lawsuits. Uh, we're waiting on a third lawsuit from DeVore that could have hundreds more filed in a separate uh, county uh, level, state level court. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. But Jerry Stock saying that uh, he just doesn't agree with that. That uh, process the VOR is using uh, to charge individuals that much uh, to, to sign on to a, a case, not only putting their name on the case, uh, but also the the uh, the financial aspect of it and the management aspect of that. Last week, I asked DeVore to react to those who were pointing out that he's made uh, more than half a million dollars uh, just in filing these lawsuits from having individual plaintiffs sign on to single suits, uh, hundreds of plaintiffs at a time. DeVore simply just said no comment. Uh, so uh, interesting to see this. Ultimately, though, it's more litigation against the state's gun ban and we'll be tracking all of that here with you on WMAY. I'm Greg Bishop with Springfield's Morning News. Uh, we got plenty more to come.